Hey guys, welcome back to Wacky Engineering, and we are going to continue on doing some programming today. In today's video, we are going to go over two types of timers that you can use. So, we'll just jump right in. Uh, once again, we're using the same trainer here, and we have our communication cable plugged in. Uh, we've already verified that we can go online. We have the program loaded in from the last project, so um, we will just kind of edit this program a little bit and utilize some of these instructions already on the screen. What we're going to do here is we are going to delete that instruction there, and we are going to go over to the timer counter tab here, and we're going to try out this TON, and that's a timer on delay instruction. So we're going to drag it into the place of where that output was, and these timers do need to be, the timer instruction itself at least, does need to be on the right hand side and it needs to kind of act like an output as far as you can have uh, different types of uh, bits through here that are going to control this timer. So uh, what I mean by that is you could have uh, several different bits here that need to become true for this timer to come on. Um, but in this case, we're going to keep it simple, and we're just going to have this single push button that is going to activate this timer. The way that we're going to make this timer work is we have to address it. This is address-based programming uh, on this type of PLC using this, this RS Logics Micro, which once again is the light version of RS Logics 500. So um, what we're going to do here is we're going to type in T4 then colon zero and zero being that's the first timer um, that you can use uh, and since it's not being used in this program I usually like to just start with the lowest numbered timer available um, so we're just gonna call this light timer and this is asking the time base so um, whether it be uh, like one second or milliseconds or whatever you want to use we're just going to use full seconds here and then right now it's asking us the preset so this is the preset amount of time that you want it to take for this timer to complete um, so we're just going to do five meaning five seconds and if you hit enter uh, then it's going to take that and then accumulation that's the amount of time that has accumulated on this timer and if we wanted to we could put like a two right here and that would mean that this timer already has two seconds accumulated on it um, but we'll just leave that at zero we'll hit enter and then we're done with that instruction now at this point if we were to download this program if we hit this button so this this goes green it starts passing the logic over so then it's gonna start timing this timer and when it hits five seconds, this timer is going to quit timing, but then nothing else is going to happen because we haven't used any part of this timer anywhere else in the program for it to actually do something. So we're going to go ahead and do that now, and I'm going to show you just in a very simple two-line uh, program how we can uh, trigger some sort of input on and then turn something on after a preset amount of time. And that's what this instruction in this case is going to be used for. So I'm going to re-address this input, or this, uh, this examine if closed instruction, and I'm going to name it, so T4 colon zero, so now at this point it's associated with this timer, but I want to tell it to do something. So I'm going to say forward slash DN, and that just means done, so when this timer times five seconds it is then going to flag this high this is going to turn green and with the way i just addressed this over here when timer four is done it's going to make this examine if closed imp uh, examine if closed instruction uh, go high which is going to pass logic so if i hit enter now it wants a new description because it is now a different instruction so it or it's the same instruction type, but it is now associated with a different bit. So before it was associated with an, a direct input on the PLC, but now it's associated with this timer. So now it needs a different description. 
So we could either give it no description or we could just say like light uh, timer done bit. That way we know this is the bit associated when this timer is done. And then we'll leave this as the same output. So um, let's go ahead and verify that everything's good and it likes it. Um, so let's download this. We'll change it back to run mode, go online with it. So as you can see in this program, we left this, so this light's already on here because we've left it. And if I want to push this real quick, now it turns off. Um, so this has nothing to do with these two lines. This is, this is kind of doing its own thing down here with the way we have this set up. But if I click this, after five seconds, this should go high which in turn will make this output go high, which should be this light right here. So we're going to click it. You can see this timing, two seconds, three, four, five. And then right at that point, our done bit triggered, which then triggered on a light. And if I click that off, the light goes back off, and the timer automatically resets. And that is important because in the next video, we're going to talk about a type of timer that that won't happen with. We're going to talk about one more timer in this video, and that is the timer off delay. And you guessed it, it is the exact opposite of this timer. So let's set that up. Oh, I'm online. Let's go offline real quick. So I'm going to just set this up the same way, except for we're going to do timer off delay. We're going to add another rung and okay, so we are going to do the same push button as the line above it. And as you notice, it automatically put in the description here because it is the exact same address, same instruction, same address. So uh, this time, we're going to go T4 colon 1. So this is the second timer that's available to use. And we'll call this light timer off delay. And we're going to go five seconds on this as well. Okay, so down here, we're going to do the same type of thing. Timer for one, done. And then this is going to be timer off, delay, done, bit. And then we are going to do output zero, zero. And it already has a description because we gave it a description earlier. So even though nowhere on this program was that output still there, um, it remembered the description we had given it earlier. So anyway, let's verify this. And then let's download. And hopefully you guys can kind of guess how this is going to work out when we push this button. Okay, so we're going to push input, uh, the first button, which is input zero, and we're going to see both of these timers time. And, or, well, we'll see this one time first, and you'll see in a second. So this one's timing, and it kicks this light on. This light was already on. And that's because of the way that this timer off delay works is after it loses its logic to tell it to, to start. So you'll see here in a second when this is removed is when this timer is going to start timing. So it is going to keep this light on for five seconds after it loses its input. So you'll see here now it's timing. 
and now it turns the light off. So in a nutshell, that's your timer on delay, timer off delay. That's how you could set them up to be utilized in a program to turn lights on and off. If you found this video informative, if you learned something, please click that like, subscribe, and alert button. And in the next video, we will move on to the last type of timer. Thanks for watching.